Good morning everyone. This is Diane. It is Monday morning here in Sayre, Pennsylvania. I am here to show you, uh, do a flip through of one of the fabric journals that I'm working on. Um, only one is done, but I'm going to show that to you and I'll give you details on the sizes of the other ones. Um, primarily for the purpose of someone who wants to reserve one. I want to let her see them and know the sizes of each one. And if anyone else is interested in having one reserved, you can um, contact me on my Etsy shop. I, I will link it below. Now this one is completed, but I'm not going to list it until the others are done. I want to list them all at the same time. And hopefully if they all sell, um, within a day or two of each other, I can mail the. I can just go to the post office once. So, um, that being said, let me talk about the two that aren't done yet, and then we'll flip through the other one. So this is the smallest one, um, and I already have the pages cut. So I'm just going to tell you the measurements of the pages themselves: five and a half by eight and a half for this one and it's I don't know what to name them I guess small medium and large I don't know um, anyway this one is mostly blue it does have some pink in it and it's the one with the the tie that is pieced together from different pieces of pillowcases and sheets so this is the smallest I think I will have to cut a piece of this off and then zigzag it because it's this part is too, it would have been too wide. I didn't cut it right. So that one will, the pages are going to stay the way they are, but the cover I'm going to have to cut a little bit. This is the large one. This is the first one I put together and it's just, a, uh, it's very tall. <laughs> so the cover is about 11 and a half inches tall. The pages measure 7 by 11. So this one is the pink. I will call this one the pink because it's the only one that's predominantly pink. It does have some blue in the focal point and there's some blue on this, but I would say it's more pink. The other two are more blue. And now on to this one that is completed. I love the way it feels with all the full pages inside it. I did put a piece of the green file folder um, inside as a spine to give it just a little bit of stability there, but it's still flexible and when I had it all sewn together I just worked it with my hands to just kind of curve it a bit so it wouldn't be just a flat piece and so this is what the cover looks like on this one I love this piece right here and I just love all I love all of the the vintage linens. It's backed with an old tablecloth or a pillowcase and there is staining on it. You can see that there. But I like that vintage look. And I want to tell you that on all of these um, the edges are rough and not perfect and that's the way I wanted them. You can see um, the batting inside um, I sewed zigzag on the outside and then again on the inside and they don't quite line up in all of the places but I that's how I wanted it. I wanted it to look rough and there will be some fraying but the stitching will stop it from fraying too far. So I just want you to be aware if you are a perfectionist um, you might not like the way the edges of these look but I like them so just be aware of that. All right, so it's a vintage sheet on the inside, and I used a vintage embroidered linen that someone had sent me recently um, as a pocket. And I put
put this postcard that I had made. I stamped this on just some cardstock and then decoupaged a napkin on it and then glued this little image from a book on it. So that's in the front pocket. You can write your name on that if you if you want to. This is uh, I did print some of the uh, linens from Gail's shop, the uh, cinnamon tea, and I will link her shop below. She had sent me some of her digitals, and um, so I printed the linen ones and used them in these books. And this is a pretty label. I forgot where that's from, but I backed it on the yellow, goldish yellow cardstock. So this linen from Gale, I printed on cardstock and I made it into a little tuck spot. And this is one of the tags that we made in one of my videos. It's just a really pretty piece of pattern cardstock cut into a tag shape with a collage. And this is from a vintage work basket book. I also used a lot of the things that um, Deborah had recently sent me. Deborah from Michigan. It's got a vintage style stamp on muslin on the back. And then there's a piece of this trim from my friend Eve in Switzerland. So I, I put a lot of gifts from my friends in these books. This is from uh, Mrs. Cog's shop. And here's one of the clusters that I made with my stamps. It's all vintage. And there's straw paper behind and I, I pretty much covered it up. I meant to have it sticking out below but I left this loose so you can actually see the straw paper back here. That's from Italy, and there's a little bit of it there, too. This is also from the Work Basket magazine. I just sewed it to a piece of cardstock and glued this little strip. And that might be from Gail's shop, too. It's either from Gail or from Rachel from Roxy Creations, which is also where the straw paper is from. All right, I won't go into so much detail. This book would take forever. Um, but this paper, the, pap the printed paper... I'm sorry, the digital paper that I used, um, a lot of it is from Antique Papery, and some is from Tailor Made Journals. So this one is Antique Papery. It's got some blue lace sewn to the side, glassine bag, and then this is a vintage piece, a piece of linen with a blue crochet. I think it's just gorgeous. This is, there's a lot of noise going on outside my window here. Can you see the lines on that? And this is a digital. This is also from Gail's shop, I believe, and it's cardstock. This is um, vintage pink typing paper. The paper that I used, the uh, pattern paper that I used is from Stampin' Up. Here's one of the clusters that I made. It's got a shoe stamped on it. This is a vintage piece of lace. The fabrics and laces are all vintage except for the muslin. And then this is from uh, an appointment book or something, a vintage one. I also had some digitals already printed. Everything, I, I think all the digitals I used were already printed except for I, I did reprint uh, some of Gail's, some of her things. I had some printed and then I had to print more to have enough for all the books. But this was already printed. I just looked for some that had journaling lines so I could just glue them onto this um, printed paper, pattern papers so that you can have a place for journaling. This is from Taylor Made Journals, um, one of her coffee dyed papers with the doilies. And there's a cluster that Deborah had sent me. Really, really pretty. I loved her tiny little clusters and I think I used all of them in these books. This is from one of the uh, books that she sent me um, about 
crocheted edgings, knitted edgings, some ledger paper, and this is a snippet from the book cover, this book cover, with some of the edgings. The colors are so cool in those vintage things. This is a page from a book about the history of jewelry. And here's one of the antique papery pages. I need to glue this envelope closed. Forgot to do that. But this is a card that you can, there's lots of journaling space here, and this is from the cover of that edging book. And this is from the Work Basket magazine. Another cluster that I made. Actually, it's a small fabric flip. A vintage applique there. This um, was a digital, I don't remember where, Mrs. Coggs, and then this is from the work basket. Um, again, some vintage papers that I used to glue down for journaling, and this is a stamped image that Deborah sent me. I believe this is from a vintage uh, amateur radio little book that they they could get to record information on. This is not hand embroidered, but it's a really beautiful piece of linen. It's got the scalloped edge and this gorgeous embroidery, which I thought looked really nice with that. And then this card was made with, it's just a vintage wrapping paper, which is really pretty, and a piece of sewing pattern, and it's stitched to just some coffee dyed paper. Here's the fabric ruffle that Deborah sent me. She sent me two of them, and I used them both in this book. Here I just glued on an advertisement from the Work Basket magazine. Here's another printable. I don't remember if this one is Gail's or, or Rachel's, but I cut it out and just glued it to this Stampin' Up! paper so it's light enough you can write on that. This is from a vintage embroidery transfer packet. And this is music score paper. And I'm pretty sure this one is from Gail, and I just, it was on paper, so I glued it to cardstock and put it on as a tuck spot, and it's supposed to have something in the pocket. So I have to find that and put it back in there. Some vintage lace edging that I had cut off a piece of linen. Oh, this is supposed to be in there. After I sewed it, I put it in the wrong spot. So this was something that I purchased from Nancy at Wishes and Weeds. This was an old cross stitch that she had purchased and she cut it into tag shapes and had it ironed on to a um, oh, wonder under type of thing. So all I had to do was peel off the backing and iron it to a piece of cardstock. And I guess it, um, then I had to cut it into the tag shape. It was a rectangle when I bought it from her and then I added this seam binding. Isn't that pretty? Another little cluster from Deborah. Another glassine bag. And this has a piece of vintage crochet on it. Some pale pink lace. This one is, I think this is the one that I printed that I have. I own this piece and I just made a copy of it. And this is from Deborah, a piece of stamped fabric. This is one that I made. Another piece of lined paper that I already had printed out. And this is from Deborah. This page that it's on is from Tailor Made Journals. So I have to link Mrs. Cog, Gail, Tailor Made Journals, and um, 
antique papery. This is from the cover of a book that Deborah sent me. <coughs> and this is another snippet from the base edging cover. Again, I have to glue that envelope closed, but this is from uh, Pillowcase, the Crocheted Edgings book. Ooh, I didn't decorate the back. I have to put something on there. There's one of the clusters that I made, or a small fabric flip. This is from the work basket book. Oh, I wonder if they're starting to do the landscaping here at my house. Love this piece. It's a digital. That's a little stamped piece. This is a uh, embroidered piece that someone had sent me. And this is a journaling card that I had made a little while ago. I had a video of that. Here's the other fabric ruffle that Deborah sent. It's a thrilling fad of the month selection. A lovely doll necklace. This one's from Gail. This is from an old address book and a vintage embroidery transfer and just a little piece of scrapbook paper there. I think this is from Gail too, but I'm not sure. Another little cluster from Deborah. This is from um, the work basket. It's a coupon you could send in. I am interested in making extra cash in my spare time from Artistic Card Company. Sorry for the noise. I didn't know that they were going to be out there today. right outside my craft room window. This is another of the linens that I own. It's on the the other blue cover. The actual linen is on the other blue cover. When I use the strips of uh, digital, you know, like these strips, I didn't use the whole thing, so I just glued the snippets down, the leftover pieces as decorations on some of the other pages. I love this one. I love the colors in this vintage piece of fabric and this mesh and this little blue applique just looks perfect on it. I stamped handmade as best, added a little bit of lace at the top. Here's another cluster from Deborah. No, I actually made this one. <laughs> I made this one. Love the colors here. It's another little snippet from the cover. didn't decorate the back of that one either. They had a lot of advertisements for things you could do to earn money. I think this is from Gail, but I can't I can't remember. Some of these were printed a long time ago, so I don't remember which one they came from. This one was from Gail. I um, cut it down to, when I printed it, I made it, I think, four by five, and then I did four on a sheet, so I had four of those beautiful little circles. And this is a piece of cut work with blue, pale blue embroidery on it. There's a little hole there in the linen. And here's another of the cards made with vintage wrapping paper and tissue 
pattern tissue. And then I needed one more ruffle, so I made this one with a strip of fabric that Deborah sent me. It was wrapped or tied around something. Here's another one. Sell unique name in skirt notes. Earn extra money. So there's must be it was a piece of stationery, a card, and the skirt says Susan. So they would make it with your name in the skirt, or yeah, and then you would you would sell these cards to people. Pretty cool, huh? I wish I had one of those. This one's from Gail. And another piece of embroidery transfer. This one was on printed tissue paper. So there we have it. This is the completed one. And I tied it, when I wrapped this around, I kind of, I didn't want to cover up that beautiful morning glory. So I wrapped it above and then below. And then just tucked it in there. And there we go. I hope you love this. I loved making it. It's it's uh, it took a, more time than one of my regular books, you know, because the cover itself took a lot of time. But I really enjoyed making it, and I've got two more to make. So I'm hoping to have these two done by the end of this week, and then I can get them all listed. So stay watching, and I'll be back again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.